The animals of the savanna no longer run away when they hear this strange sound. The creaking noises of this truck are known all over Bariba in Benin. Zachary is the unfortunate owner. From October to January, the north of Benin lives at the pace of the cotton harvesting. The fibre represents around 40% of the country's exports. For months, rickety trucks travel the country's roads at their great risk. <laughs> Cotton is the country's wealth, but the rural countryside is poor. Huge amounts of water are required to grow it. <laughs> During the harvest, day and night, Benin revolves around all things cotton. For almost a week, around 100 drivers have been hoping to load their trucks with cotton. A never-ending wait, without any conveniences or comforts, never being able to move away from their vehicles. Si on laisse les camions comme ça, les voleurs peuvent venir voler de n'importe quoi. Ils peuvent venir enlever gasoil ou batterie. Et avant, il avait combien de millions de kilomètres quand il a pris Bon, c'est utilisé sur les plans. On ne sait pas comment ils ont utilisé ça. Avant de, de nous amener ça, des fois, ils vont réduire leurs compteurs. C'est mon emprunté. Il est venu apprendre lui-même pour être chauffeur. Oui, il voyage avec moi. Draman and his apprentice transport the bales of cotton, which are processed in this factory. They're hoping to load the truck up today, but there seems to be little hope of that. dates back to the 80s, and so do its safety regulations. In amongst this deafening racket, around 50 factory workers clean the cotton of its impurities. After waiting for nine days, the eagerly awaited miracle is finally here. 
Draman loads up 24 tonnes of cotton. The driver has to deliver the bales in less than 24 hours to the port of Cotonou. The name of the city sounds strangely like a homage to the precious plant. Far from it, Cotonou actually means river of death, just like the road that leads there. 600 kilometers at full speed all the way to the other side of the country. During celebrations, the Beninese dance the teke, and when they drive, they dance the shake, a dance created for the road and its endless bumps and turns. It's only after several kilometers that Draman is able to fully start the truck. Even beneath all its modern features, the vehicle has reached the old age of 40. Once he's reached 100 kilometers an hour, Draman barely touches the brake. But who protects the pedestrians and motorcyclists when his truck turns into a fast-moving killing machine? Especially considering that Draman rarely checks his mirrors. This piece of metal is none other than the iron strapping holding the fuel tank inside. The fuel tank could come off at any moment, exploding all over the road. Ten long kilometers later, it very nearly happened. It's still a long way to Cotonou. In Benin, trucks like Draman's are nicknamed Titans, a reference to a French military truck from the 40s which transported heavy loads at high speeds. Zachary's truck is far from being a titan. It moves at walking pace. It very rarely goes over five kilometers an hour. Zachary drives around the scrubland plantations, loading up the cotton to take to the factory. The old truck from the 60s lost its haughtiness long ago and its engine is not as brave as it used to be.
A DIY solution is much cheaper. By placing the tank high up in the cabin, pressure forces the petrol down into the engine. But the system has its limits. It's the fifth breakdown this morning. Every few kilometers, Zachary turns into a human pump to get the fuel flowing again. Before loading up, the men compress the cotton. <laughs> During the harvest, on each farm, families lend a hand in the fields. There are no exceptions. The children work an average of 10 hours a day. Before becoming farmers, the Bariba people were wild warriors, engaging in single combat. Today, each loading reawakens this dormant fighting spirit. The group that can carry the highest number of 130 kilogram bales will be declared the winner. The round of the cotton farms lasts two days. Zachary's truck transports the clouds of cotton as it moves along.
cotton has become one of the main sources of wealth for Benin, but for the last few years, drought has reduced the harvest. A nasty surprise awaits Zachary in the next village. There's a revolt on the farm. <laughs> None of the workers want to load up the truck. There's nothing Zachary can do. It's impossible to convince them. However, the men aren't asking for a lot. The owner of the cotton field hasn't provided enough water for the men. In order to find more, it's quite an expedition. The well is three kilometers from the village. The women will have to walk three more kilometers to get to the second water source. The drought isn't the only cause of this. Cotton is one of the crops that consumes the most water in the world. An hour and a half later, the women come across a black water source. The water is murky and putrid. The women have walked six kilometers for five bowls and two cans of water. <laughs> 
boiled maize flour forms the base of their sustenance almost all year round. To avoid intestinal problems caused by the muddy water, the men make a natural medicine. They filter part of the liquid with ash. This makes the water richer in potassium and it acts as anti-diarrhea medicine. Once fed and watered, the men sniff a makeshift drug made up of powdered tobacco. <laughs> The men get back to work, but it's too late. Zachary will have to spend the night in the village. Draman has also spent the night on the side of the road. To make up for lost time, he speeds through the villages without ever slowing down. The day before, he wasted lots of time stuck in traffic. As night falls, he's been forced to stop due to people blocking the road. Highway bandits who strip travellers of their goods and police checks cost him even more precious time. In order to live, Draman has to make two return journeys to the port of Cotonou every month. The patron will pay and he certainly needs the money. The Raman has two children and three wives. One whom he lives with in town and the two others live in a village on the other side of the road. When he passes by, they take the opportunity to spend a bit of time together. With his two wives, Draman has started a small business reselling coal. The coal will be resold by his wives for double the price in the surrounding villages. Draman also takes a few bags to resell in restaurants in Cotonou. 
It's a bit of extra income which helps him provide for his many family members. <laughs> This time, Draman is hoping to arrive at the port of Cotonou before nightfall. The sea is still far away, and his talisman seems to be failing him. Now, I'm 50 years old. If I pass like this, the wind will be me faire rentrer dans la bourse parce que la voie n'est pas été bonne fait. Voilà deux camions qui viennent et l'autre est en panne dans mon côté. Le chauffeur n'a pas pu guider le camion là. But there's a more serious concern. The truck is slowly tipping over, weighed down by its load of wood which was displaced during the accident. In the end, it's the load that saves them. Même si ça ça veut tomber, ça peut caler ici quoi. Là, nous sommes sûrs que ça ça va caler. As all drivers travel fast, the big risk on this main road is multi-vehicle collisions. C'est le camion, c'est ceci qui était sur la voie. C'est ceci qui a fait que l'accident s'est produit. C'est ceci qui était sur la route qui n'est pas été enlevé. Si c'était enlevé, celui-ci allait trouver la voie libre et savoir où passer. The truck looks fit for the scrap heap, but knowing all too well never to be wasteful, the Beninese have learned to mend and make do. The dégât, c'est à ce niveau. C'est au niveau de la plateforme là-bas qui est tombée. Donc il va falloir amener encore la mécanique pour refaire. Nous allons récupérer ce camion, ça c'est sûr, et l'utiliser aussi sur et bientôt dans le mois qui vient pour le voyage. Just having passed by the accident, an alarm starts to ring in Draman's cabin. There's at least one advantage of being on this road. The mechanics are never far away. Within 10 minutes, they arrive with a new pump. On the other side of the road, the scenes resemble those of a prison. Prisoners of their own poverty, these men and women break down stone into gravel just to be able to eat. Yarima, who's 25, works here with her children. Yarima, who's 25, works here with her children. 
Cassia, who came on was his job, and Lisa. Valley, I walk around now. Nisifa, Yamilim, the milk, patent, it and Ninkula more. The gravel is resold to building contractors. Some Beninese people try to change their lives by putting faith in higher beings. Voodoo originated in the heart of the forest through the meeting of the Yoruba gods and the Fon and Yu deities. Over centuries, it has become a religion. These women are dancing for their king and religious leader of the voodoo cult, Dagbo Hunon Huna II. Thanks to voodoo, the king is able to settle issues. The voodoo spirits can bring about justice, predict good or bad omens, and cure problems like relationship disputes. This man is said to have been bewitched by a spirit who's made him be unfaithful. His wife wants to leave him. The priest questions him about this. <laughs> the couple's problems are said to have affected their child. No, what can do? No, Barbara on the boy, the hope of Perry. can throw what we can do to Futula. The spirit's talking to the child's mother. It says the wife must keep her mouth shut and not swear at or insult her husband. That way, her child's health will improve. Sur l'enfant. Le sacrifice fera en sorte que la misère n'arrive pas. As for Draman, he's a king of the road. He's now driving at breakneck speed. Those who stand in his way should beware. He'll stop at nothing to arrive at Cotonou Port before nightfall. <laughs> 
As for Zakari, he has finished picking up his cotton. Five hours for a mere 65 kilometers. But Zachary hasn't been completely unlucky. He's broken down in his own village. After renting a motorbike, he's off in search of a new belt for the truck. His village is on a main road and there's no shortage of DIY stores. There is, however, a shortage of belts. Three hours later, he's ready to head back, but then... The alternator has stopped working. Zachary is forced to call a mechanic. While he waits for the mechanic, Zachary returns home downhearted. He'll have to admit to his wife that some of his wages have once again ended up in the pocket of a mechanic. She still manages to make him smile, even if just for a few seconds. I'm 
He can tell from the tarmac on the road that the factory is close. The final piece of bad news of the day arrives in the factory car park. Once again, the factory is running several days behind, leaving the drivers waiting once more. Bon, nous sommes là depuis une semaine. Ça donne déjà une semaine. Nous sommes ici depuis le vendredi passé. The delays are costly for drivers like Zachary. While he waits, the cotton harvesting will continue, and manufacturers will call upon other drivers to do his job. Another problem with the engine has forced Raman to once more spend the night at the side of the road. His boss will make up for this extra day by taking it off his salary. Raman arrives in Cotonou two days late and the huge traffic jams in the big city don't help the situation and neither does the picky administration office in the port. The clock is ticking and a wave of rebellion descends upon the port. None of the dockers will help. Tu as la possibilité d'aller prendre encore un autre chargement. Oui, oui. Et c'est ça, ça vous ralentit et ça ralentit la compétitivité du port autonome de Cotonou aussi. Oui, oui. Voilà. The reprimanding continues. The coal Raman has transported to make some extra money has made some of the cotton dirty. Le 
Merci, vous avez l'esprit. Oui, prenez votre disposition pour que ça ne se répète plus. D'accord, merci. Eventually, two dockers accept the work. As soon as it's off the truck, the bales of cotton are evaluated by buyers like Jean-Pierre, who's come over from France. Qu'est-ce que vous faites là? Regarde la longueur de la soie. Many of the bales aren't quite up to scratch. Benin's cotton is sold all around the world. Draman's decent wage allows him to support his big family. He is polygamous. The driver has just married his third wife and he never denies her anything. Tout cela là, c'est garde bol. Peut-être elle peut prendre cela. Si je vois ça ne va pas, elle peut changer, prendre l'autre. Si elle veut me faire du thé, elle prend l'autre. Le coco. Tu as des bruits. Ça peut Ah Raman drives seven days a week so he can feed his family. As for Zachary, he only has one wife, but his old truck is just as expensive. Mm -hmm. 